Cyclones back at the bank looking for back-to-back -back home wins on consecutive nights. They got a 3-0 win over Reading on Saturday to move one point ahead of Evansville in the North Division standings. First period tonight. After a little uh, was it diaper chase, diaper challenge, is that what they call it? First period, 1-0 Wheeling leading. They play it perfectly in the corner. Zach Torquato beats Michael Hauser. 2-0 Wheeling in the lead. Clones would get back in it, though. Take a look at this, this shot. Ricochets off the boards, and then it's poked home. Cyclones down 2-1. Second period on the charge again. Now they're down 3-1, coming down the wing. The kick shot rebound. Comes to Josh Burkholz. He pokes that home. 3-2 game. Clones were down one, but couldn't get any closer than that. 4-2 final. Wheeling wins tonight at the bank. Ohio State made quick work of Indiana and Columbus yesterday, running their record to 11-0. 23-0 since Urban Meyer arrived on campus. Next up is Michigan, followed by the Big Ten title game. Braxton Miller was just sensational once again yesterday. And with a loss by Baylor, the Buckeyes are now comfortably in that number three spot. Basically every poll, including the important one, the BCS. And their road to a perfect season may be a little easier than Alabama's, which has to play at Auburn. And then, of course, if they survive that, the SEC title game. New BCS poll out this evening reveals no change at the very top. It's Bama and Florida State, one and two. Ohio State, now a much stronger third, as mentioned, following that loss by Baylor. Auburn, the new number four. And Bama will play in that Iron Bowl, so things still could break right for the Buckeyes as far as the BCS title game. Ford Xavier returns to Cintas tomorrow to close out a five-game season opening homestand. The Bahamas is next for the three-game battle for Atlantis, so they'll go from about 28 degrees to roughly 80. Coach Mack has to be hoping his team isn't looking past Abilene Christian and towards the tropics of the Bahamas. Even in a 26-point win over Miami last week, you know Coach Mack would find a few things to pick apart. Early on, our transition defense was uh, not where it needs to be. Um, you know, we were uncharacteristic uh, in, in a couple areas in transition that could have easily been eliminated had we talked um, and, and we didn't do that, which is, is disheartening, but, um, you know, something that we have to fix. All right, see if they can fix it tomorrow night at home. Kentucky State football playoffs resume next weekend with New Cap and Highlands in action. New Cap will play Somerset and won't have to travel very far. That game's in Newport. Highlands will be at Lexington Catholic. Both games kick at 7.30 on Friday. And what a win for Moeller last night. Four touchdown performance from Gus Raglan for a nine point win over Colerain. Raglan engineered a 15 play, 90 yard drive. Made up more than seven minutes of clock to put the game away for the defending champs who have now drawn Hilliard Davidson in the state semis. That game will be played at Dayton's Welcome Stadium. 13 and 0 Loveland moves on to play Zanesville in division two. They're also down to the final four and not one of the remaining four has ever won a state title. So uncharted waters for everyone here. Tigers rallied to beat Mount Healthy on Friday night to get themselves into this position, and that one will be played at Columbus DeSales. Clinton Massey is a seven-point winner on Friday over Alter, so their dream of back-to-back -back titles in Division Four is still alive. They'll get Kenton. Falcons will need Bailey Wolf to continue his solid play. Wolf went for 122 yards rushing and three touchdowns in Friday's win. Kenton is undefeated, and those two teams will meet in Dayton as well at Welcome Stadium.